Mighty Lord, we thank you. We bless your name for the privilege to hear your word. The privilege to be here, O oh Lord, as living souls. Father, be exalted in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray that as your word comes through to us this morning, let it come with revelation in Jesus' name. Let it come with fresh understanding in Jesus' name. Let it come with new wisdom. Let your word trigger a new resolution to act in our lives and to emerge to the place of purpose in the mighty name of Jesus. Holy Spirit of God, come and help us. Come and teach everyone, teach the teacher, teach everyone to the glory of your name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Shout hallelujah. So today we are looking at a topic titled Freedom to Emerge. You know, for the entire month we're focusing on freedom. So it's a teaching series on freedom. And today specifically, we're looking at freedom to emerge. It is my belief that after this message, somebody will emerge into destiny in Jesus' name. Somebody will emerge into purpose in Jesus' name. Everything that pulls us back up until now will lose its hold in Jesus' name. Open your Bibles with me to the book of 1 Chronicles chapter 4, verses 9 to 10. 1 Chronicles chapter 4, verses 9 to 10. Now, that's very popular in the Bible. I'm sure you know it's a story of Jabez. 1 Chronicles chapter 4, verses 9 to 10. Now, Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. And his mother called his name Jabez, saying, because I bore him in pain. And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Hold oh, that you would bless me indeed, and enlarge my territory, that your hand would be with me, and that you would keep me from evil, that I may not cause pain. So God granted him what he requested. May God bless the reading of his word. In Jesus' name, freedom to emerge. I know everybody, everyone desires to emerge. And everyone is free to emerge. But the issue is, not everyone is ready to emerge. Are you with me this morning? As much as we all desire to emerge, not every one of us is ready to emerge. In the story of Jabez that we read, he desired to emerge and he decided to emerge. Why? He was unable to pay the price of what he needed in his own time to emerge. And he placed that, he, he, he paid that price in the place of prayer. The Bible said that he called on the God of Israel. And the Bible said that so God granted him what he requested. So when there is no action, there is no solution. Are you with me? So if you are expecting solution this morning to where you are, to how you are, then you must decide in your heart in your mind to heart when there's no action there's no solution for everyone watching me today hearing me i pray the lord would inspire you to act in the mighty name of jesus you will receive fresh courage to emerge one more time you receive fresh courage to excel in the mighty name of jesus so what does it mean to emerge? When we talk about somebody emerging, we're talking about the person arising from obscurity, from a place where he's been hidden for so long and coming into a limelight. We're talking about somebody becoming more visible, more noticeable. Jabez was never known before. The only thing that was known with him or about him was that he was born in sorrow. He was born into pain. But the moment he determined in his mind to pay the price, he came into the limelight. 
The Bible wrote concerning him. He said that and Jabez became more honorable. So for you to emerge, you must decide to come out of anything that keeps your view. Anything that keeps you away from the place of reckoning. You decide in your mind to move away from it. To emerge is to recover or to survive a difficult or demanding situation. And every one of us has found ourselves in different tough times before. But because you are standing today, it means you have come out strong. And you can always come out stronger, no matter how tough that situation or that challenge is. To emerge is to grow, is to prosper, is to flourish, is to thrive and to, and to excel, to arise, to become outstanding. That is what it means to emerge. And it is solely your decision. Nobody would decide for me to emerge. Nobody would decide for you to emerge. It must be your what? Your decision. It was Jabez's decision to call on God of Israel for help. Nobody encouraged him to call for help. He analyzed his situation and he realized that he wasn't living up to his desire. The Bible says, and he called on the God of Israel. So you must also come to a place of decision today. And you cannot effectively come to a place of decision when you are lacking in self-awareness. Self-awareness is the, is the fundamental point, the starting point for you to decide to emerge. Because if you don't know that you are limited or you have challenges, you will not be looking for solution. So Jabez came to a point of self-awareness to realize that he was born in pain. And because he did not want to continue to live in pain, he cried to God for help. The God of Israel. And God answered him. So he emerged into a place of honor. I pray for you today as you are coming to a place of awareness and you are crying to God for help, you will emerge into greatness. In the mighty name of Jesus, you will emerge into excellence. You will emerge into relevance. You will emerge into a place of influence. In the mighty name of Jesus, anybody and everybody can emerge from nothing into something. You just need to come to a place of decision. The business may not have worked last year. Last year is gone. Don't see yourself as a failure. See yourself as having got the opportunity to learn how to do it differently. So you can rise up and emerge into a successful business owner this year. And so it, so it shall be for you in Jesus' name. Proverbs 24 verse 16. It tells us that even though the righteous may fall seven times, he shall rise again. So if you have not failed up to seven times, you have a more opportunity to rise again. Don't stay back in the place of past failure. This year presents you another brand new opportunity to emerge. And so you will emerge in the name of Jesus. You can emerge out of stagnation. You may have been on the same position for, cent uh, for so many weeks. I was going to say for century, but nobody has lived up a up century here. But it doesn't matter how long that you have been on that same spot. You can emerge and become great again. And so it shall be for you. In the name of Jesus. Somebody can emerge from a, from a thought process, from a self-concluded position of rejection into a new level of acceptance. Somebody can emerge from that addiction that has held you bound and captive day in, day out. 
You've been struggling to come out of it, but you see yourself coming back into it. Today, you are emerging into freedom. In the mighty name of Jesus, somebody can emerge from a place of defeat. And you can suddenly discover a better version of yourself with strength and vigor. If that is you, shout hallelujah. You can emerge from a place of self-inflicted mess. The mess that you put yourself. You can emerge from it. You may have made terrible mistakes. You may have messed up yourself. You can come out of that mess at your decision. And the Lord will give you power to come out. In the name of Jesus. So stop staying in that corner of self-condemnation and refuse to come out of it. In the book of Luke chapter 15, verse 18, the Bible tells us about the prodigal son. He inflicted mess on himself. He wasted all his own resources, all his inheritance. But a time came when he came to a point of self-decision. In verse 18, he said, I will arise and go to my father and said to him, I have sinned against heaven and before you. The point is that he came to a point of self-decision. I will arise and go to my father. So it doesn't matter how terrible that mess that you brought yourself into. Through decision, through association, through inaction, whatever it may be, you can arise today and start afresh. And the Lord will give you a new beginning. The Lord will give you a new beginning in the mighty name of Jesus. To be able to effectively emerge, you must be sensitive to divine timing. Sensitivity to divine timing is very important for you to emerge effectively. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1 to everything that is a season and a time for every purpose under heaven. Moses was trying to move ahead of his time. He was trying to emerge ahead of destiny and he got himself into trouble. You know the story. He was, he was assuming that people ought to have known that he was born to lead the people of Israel and deliver them out of Egypt. And so he moved ahead of God and killed an Egyptian in favor of an Israelite. That led him to run away for his life in that country. So sensitivity to divine timing is important for you to emerge effectively. Because when you understand the time and the season that God is moving you into, you are positioned to behave correctly. You are positioned to act with diligence. You are positioned and prepared to act with, um, to act with wisdom. And so you must understand the season that God has brought you to or that God is bringing you into. Last year, November 2021, we spent the whole month discussing about season, new season. The good news is that God confirmed his word. We thank God for those testimonies of his mighty moves in people's life. But the better news is that that season has not gone. The season is still very much available and it's expanded. It's expanded. So don't lose hope yet. Don't think, oh, it's gone. You can also still get your own portion and the Lord will give you your own portion. In the mighty name of Jesus, what is my confidence to confirm to you that the season has not gone? Because we were told by by, by Daddy G.O. that the siege is over. When the siege is over, there is freedom to express into greatness. There is freedom to become who you want to be. So the siege is over. Now you have that freedom to emerge again. Because we are told that there is fresh air for us. We have that liberty to enter into a new beginning. So the season is getting better. And for us as children in the redeemed Christian church of God, year 2022 
is significant. Significant because we are told by Daddy Gio that it's a year filled with massive miracles, massive breakthroughs, massive breakthroughs. And I know you will get your portion. I will get my portion in the mighty name of Jesus. We were told that 80% of projects that kicks off this year will succeed. So it is the time to set up business. It is the time to embark on projects. It is the time to inject new capital into that business for you to flourish. And you will flourish in Jesus' name. We are told in that prophecy for the year that in this year, previously unknown star will begin to emerge. So the season is better. The season is ripe. You only just need to discover yourself and move in divine direction to the season. So understanding the season and the timing helps you to behave wisely. The Bible talks about Joseph, Psalm 105, verses 19 to 22. The scripture says when the time of his word came, the king sent for him and released him. He made him the Lord over his people. And the ruler over his possession. He made him to teach his elders wisdom. So understanding the time. Very crucial. Now that you know that the time that we are. As children of God. We are in a very, very flourishing time. It doesn't matter what the global index is saying. It doesn't matter what the Omicron is doing. It doesn't matter the impact of that on the economy. If you understand what God did in the time of Isaac, then you know God, God doesn't work by, by natural economy to bless you. So your faith has to be clear. Your mind has to be clear to understand the season we have. And that should propel you to be able to emerge. And you will emerge this year. You will emerge this season to take your place in destiny. In the mighty name of Jesus. To save our time, I'm going to discuss with you three requirements for you to emerge. And that is the focus of this teaching. If you want to take note, it's good to take note. Three important requirements that you must fulfill, that I must fulfill for me, for you to emerge, to take our place in destiny. What must we do? Very important, you must have faith. Faith is important. It's the starting point for you to emerge. Why do you need faith? If they're saying there's abundance, you must believe that indeed there's abundance. That is when you can move to claim your portion of the abundance. But when you don't believe it, the abundance could be there. And somebody who doesn't believe may not go for his portion. So faith is important. In this season of emergence, faith that you can arise again and cross over every limitation that has been on your way in the past. Faith that you, God working in you, can do impossible. Faith that greater is he who lives in you than he who lives in the world. You must have faith that with God all things are possible. You must have faith that it doesn't matter how long or how much the lost has been, that you can recover all and overtake in abundance. Jabez demonstrated a level of faith. He did not resign himself to that to that unfavorable destiny, he cried to the God of Israel because he had faith in him and God of Israel showed up for him. So you also must demonstrate faith that you believe the word that has been said to us as prophetic release for the year. That is a year of massive breakthrough. That is a year where you are imagined as a star, even though you were not known last year, that you are coming to a place 
where people will know you this year. That you are coming to a place and position of influence in this year 2022. Your faith is important. And faith is not effective when hope is lacking. We know that by now as a church. We thought about this last year. Your faith must be resting on the hope that you have. When there is no hope, your faith is nonsense. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. You must be hoping for something. Faith helps you to believe that God can do it. Hope keeps you in expectation of positive outcome. So if faith is a father, hope is the mother to produce your miracle. Here's what I mean. The interaction of both parents produce a child. Is that correct? So the same way, the interaction of faith and hope will produce your brain child. Those ideas you keep in your brain, faith and hope will ensure they are battered at the fullness of time. I pray your hope will come alive. A, 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 a wretched man is not a man who has no money in his bank account. A wretched man is a man whose hope has been drained out. Because at that point, there is nothing for faith to work on. And by extension, there is nothing for God to work on. Your faith gives God a reason to move on your behalf. Your faith is like the amplifier that gets God into action to produce a noise of deliverance on your behalf. And that faith can only be possible or effective with the help of hope. So for you to emerge this year, your faith must be solid. I pray your faith will not die. Your faith will not die. Your hope will come alive in the mighty name of Jesus. So we're clear, faith is required. Focus is also required. Focus. 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 You have faith, you are not focused. You are delaying the journey. Okay? I like what Proverbs number 4, chapter 4, verse 25 says. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 25. It says, let your eyes look straight ahead. And your eyelids look right before you. Proverb is calling you into focus. Into focus. Have you not known that distraction can be a weapon in the hand of the devil to slow down somebody's journey? Yes, distraction can be an affliction. When somebody lacks a sense of direction of what next to do. Once, when somebody is diverted from the course of destiny, when a mind is so confused that they lack the knowledge of what idea to pursue, distraction. And that is why 95% of people are suffering from today. Even though they are busy, they wake up every morning going to work. They attempt everything possible within their disposal. Distraction. May you not be distracted. In the journey of life, may you not be distracted. In the pursuit of purpose, may you not be distracted. In the name of Jesus, distraction is when somebody is dragged away from his purpose and his passion. And we saw that played out in the life of Samson. Judges chapter 13 to chapter 16. He was distracted from his primary assignment. When he was born in Judges chapter 13, God told his parents, he must be a Nazarite. No reason must touch his head. Because he must deliver the Israelites from the hand of Philistine. This same Samson, 
delighted himself in the ladies of Philistine. Destruction. A deliverer of the people became a delighter, if there is a word like that, of the, of the, of the women of the enemy. And that is how the devil works. When he's distracting you, he's not taking you too far away from that purpose so that you don't become sensitive. He keeps you within the same scope, but he gives you a counterfeit of the original. Devil did not take something away from Philistine. He kept him in Philistine, but he's beclouded him with the ladies of Philistine. Power of destruction. A deliverer of Israel made nonsense of himself on the account of destruction. I pray for somebody who believes this today. In the journey of life, you will not be distracted. In the pursuit of your destiny, you will not be distracted. In the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus told Martha, Martha was busy. Luke chapter 10, 39 to 42. Martha has a sister, Mary. Mary sat down cleverly to listen to Jesus' teaching. But Martha was so zealous to feed Jesus. And she was in the kitchen going up and down, going everywhere. A time came when she became mad that she wasn't getting support from Mary. And she went to complain to Jesus. Jesus told him, come down, Martha. You are too busy in kitchen affairs. But only one thing is important. And Mary has chosen that which no one can take away from her. So Jesus was teaching uh, matter how to be focused. May you not be distracted. The same individual who wants to be a business analyst is also projecting himself a supply chain expert. Also projecting himself a financial um, guru. Also claiming to be a sales expert. The same person. You are confusing your helpers. They won't know where to help you. And in doing so, you are not only confusing them, you are also draining out your energy. So when you thin around everything and nothing ends up working, the person becomes frustrated and it becomes like life is not fair on him. Life is fair. You just need to be focused. To enjoy the fairness of life. May God give you focus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Focus is important. It is, it is good to be diverse in skill. But power of focus helps you to harness those skill diversity into a one direction. And that is where you get your help. I pray the Lord will focus you. Focus on your passion this year. Last year, December, we thought about taking charge of 2022 power of planning. You can leverage on that if you have done your planning. Whatever goals you set for yourself to this year, those are the things we need to focus on. When things come to distract you, be clear-minded to weigh and compare and be sure that this is still relevant to replace the goal that you have set. Otherwise, you will fall for everything. And unfortunately, time will not wait for you. A man who keeps falling for everything will end up standing for nothing at the end of the year. May that not be you. In the name of Jesus. Perhaps you did not hear the message of power of planning. You can get it on YouTube. Take few. The year has not gone too far. You can still come to a place of plan or planning to decide what are the most important things you want to focus on this year. And that should be your focus. Focus is important. Because you will eventually become what you focus on. Everything you focus on, you will eventually become them. So when there is no focus, there is nothing for 
that person to become. That's what we are saying. The Lord will help you to focus in Jesus' name. So, faith is important. Focus is important. Favor is also important. Paul plants Apollo waters. Who gives increase? God. Faith is good. Focus is necessary. But the favor of God blesses all of those. May God favor you this year. In the mighty name of Jesus. Everywhere you turn, favor will speak for you. Favor will speak for you. Favor will speak for you. When people are turned back, favor will open the door for you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Favor is when God steps into your situation and make a significant difference that you by yourself could not have been able to make. When favor is in operation in your life, goodness and mercy must be your companion. And so it shall be for you. Any man who carries favor do not lack in goodness. They don't lack in the mercies of God. So favor is all you need to come upon your power of focus. And then you see things turning in your, in, in, in your direction. And that will be your portion in Jesus' name. Fa this favor, time will not permit us to go into detail with favor. But favor of God on a man can walk in a multi-dimensional way. There is, not, there is no one single path to favor. It works in a multifaceted version. For instance, it is the favor of God on you that gets your prayers to be answered. It is not the length of time you pray, I'm sure you know. Even though it's important to pray well, to pray deep. But it is not the length of time. It is how much of favor of God upon the prayer point. Look at Jabez. Five prayer points that change his destiny. Five prayer points. Oh, that your hand will rest on me. That you will enlarge my coast or my territory. That I will not see evil. My eyes will not see evil. That I will not cause pain. Four prayer points. And the Bible says, and God answered his prayer. So it is not the one hundred prayer point. It is how much of the favor of God that comes on those prayer points. I pray this moment, every time you kneel to pray to God, every time you stand to pray to God, everywhere in your closet, in your house, in your room, heavens will open upon you. The favor of God will speak upon those prayer points. In the mighty name of Jesus, favor is when you are preferred over your peers with the same skill set, the same capacity, the same competency, but you are just preferred over your peers. We saw that in the life of Esther. Esther chapter 2 verse 17. The Bible says now the king was attracted to Esther more than any of other women and she won the favor and the approval of the king more than any of the virgin. I pray you will win the favor and the approval of kings in our time. More than your competitors. More than your peers. And the Bible says, and the king made, he, made her a queen in place of Vashti. I pray favor will take you to your palace. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let's write to our feet. We have a few minutes. Let's pray. Let's talk to God. Be fired up this morning to pray because the favor of God is coming upon your prayer point. Ask God for strength and courage to emerge in this year, 2022. And you don't want to emerge late. You want to emerge early. The Bible says, satisfy us early with your mercy. Pray that the power of God we come upon you and move you to emerge in this season. To emerge as early as it can be. That you will not be delayed in your emerging. 
you will not be delayed. You will not, you, you, you will not slow down in your decision to emerge. You will not be distracted in your decision to emerge. You will not be taken away from the path that is right for your emergence. Ask God for strength. Ask God for courage. Ask God for wisdom. Ask the power of the Holy Spirit to keep you in focus when the devil would want to come with his distraction. Ask God. Talk to God. It is not a silent prayer. The Bible says that Jabez cry unto the God of Israel. Nobody cries in silence. You cry aloud in prayer and ask God for help. Ask God for strength. Ask God for grace to emerge because the season is right. The time is right. The, the atmosphere is right by all spiritual sense and understanding. It is for you to emerge in response to the timing that God has positioned you. Ask God for courage. Ask Him for strength. Ask Him for focus. Pray that the favor of God will come upon every effort that you put into work. Every labor that you exert this season. Pray that the favor of God will come upon them. There is freedom to emerge because the timing is right. It will be on you if you refuse to emerge. It will be on you if you refuse to emerge. It will be on you if you step back from imagining. It is the time to start that company that you have had in your dream because the Lord is strengthening your faith and your hope is coming alive. An interaction of faith and hope will give birth to your brain child to become a living child. Those ideas will cease not to exist only on your iPad but for people to see them. Ask God for grace this morning. Ask God for grace. Shala bra sotoye, balika satayaba sotoye. It is time to revisit those business ideas. It is time to 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 seek for a bigger place in your office, for the next available promotional level that is advertised, because the favor of God is on the table for you to pick. Talk to God for strength to emerge, for grace to emerge. That where you have not been known before, you are gaining relevance in those places. The scripture says in the book of Romans, that it shall come to pass in the same place where it was said to them, they are not our people. The Bible says you shall be called the children of the living God. If that is your portion, if you are the one the scripture is talking about, pray to God for you to emerge. Pray to God for you to emerge. Shalaba sentaya, broka sintaya, basinta hima sotaya. Lord, take away distraction. Let distraction be away from our path, that our eyes may focus on our purpose, on our passion. Thank you because it is done. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Isaiah chapter 49 verse 9 it says that you will say to the prisoners go forth to those who are in darkness show yourself I speak to somebody this morning in every prison of your mind that you have kept yourself in limitation you are rising up strong this morning in the name of Jesus you are going forth with the power to emerge into greatness into success into excellence you are emerging into influence into relevance in the name of Jesus he said unto those who are in darkness show yourself I pray that the light of God will project you for the world that your emergence will receive global acceptance in the mighty name of Jesus your emergence will receive global acceptance your emergence will receive global acceptance in the name of Jesus the favor of God is coming on you and you are showing yourself forth you are presenting yourself 
as the solution to the world by the power of the Holy Ghost in the mighty name of Jesus where you have not known until now you are gaining relevance in those places you are gaining acceptance in those places in the mighty name of Jesus so it is and it shall be in Jesus mighty name we pray this is the Liberty Assembly raising a glorious generation